All right, hey, everybody. This is uh, yeah. Conversations with Mr. P. Uh, I've got two more of our seniors from Delaware Christian School. Sorry, I'm really, really distracted by my lights tonight. Um, anyway, I've got two more of our seniors uh, from Delaware Christian School here tonight with us. Uh, we've got Mitchell uh, Smith. Uh, how long have you been at DCS, Mitchell? How long? Well, since my eighth grade year, so five years. Okay. We've got a kid named Mike Aperia. I've known him for a few years. Uh, Micah, uh, how, how long have you been at DCS? Two years, my junior and my senior year. So those of you that are watching this, yes, Micah is not sharing computer with me. <laughs> he had to be in his own room for this. <laughs> so we're literally like 25 feet apart, but there's a wall between us. No, it just made more sense, though. Hey, whatever. Uh, I don't <laughs> <laughs> and no, I don't have my headphones because Isaiah, I guess, is playing, is he playing with Channing. Yeah, he's with Channing right now. All right, so playing with Channing Smith in Jersey, so uh, I lost my yeah. headphones. But apparently, my headphones are good. Everybody likes those. So, They're all right. Good. So, um, so let's see here. Um, so Mitchell, uh, when uh, you growing up, uh, did you play any sports or or what? Yeah, I mean, I've always uh, played a little bit of sports. Uh, I played like rec league soccer uh, in Delaware. Um, Played t-ball uh, probably two or three years, nice. um, but then after uh, probably after like the really really like early ages, probably after like year eight, obviously like we started a church, so like sports kind of took the back seat to that, and so we really didn't have time, and so I really picked it back up. Um, like I played golf a lot with my dad because. Uh, that was just something that he and be like stress free, um, so I played that from probably fourth grade on. Um, but other than that, like other sports like uh, basketball, didn't really pick back up till eighth grade. Being at DCS, being there. Um, what What's your dad's background in golf? I know he coached right for the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. Well, he's. Like really, really, he's just been recreational um, yeah. until the last couple years, um, and then, like, so he's. I was fortunate enough. Um, I've had a couple people um, throughout the years sponsor me for lessons and um, actually pay for me to take golf lessons, um, and so he's been able to sit in and kind of like get what he can from um, the lessons I've taken, uh, and so that's his like background he he played in high school too um but he wasn't any good uh and then like he just basically because we wanted me to play he was like hey I'll, I'll coach this thing like let's just get it going so sophomore year my sophomore year we started a team he started coaching and he's coached through this year that's cool um so let's see so you so took lessons how, how much did lessons help you with golf Oh, big time. Like, there's so much, like, there's so much, like, different theories in golf of how to do different things. And so it's nice to have somebody that's actually, like, professional to be there and watch you and be like, hey, this is what you're doing wrong. Um, so for the time that I was doing it, it definitely helped big time. And, and, and primarily with, with technique, right? And just, like, th thinking through how to, how to hit the ball and how to stay mm -hmm. in. Yeah. yeah, definitely all, all technique, yeah. Okay. Uh, and my, Micah, so obviously I, I know your background, but you know, people who don't know, like I do. So um, you, your background, you, you were starting off when you were little with jujitsu, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, how really long did you do jujitsu for? Um, I don't know, four or five years, I think. Four or five years. Did you, did you like jujitsu? Oh yeah. Dude, that was so much fun. It was just like wrestling, but with like, you know, it was just so much different technique. It was actually, it was so fun. I loved it. You know, it's funny because I, I've always said I never, I was never interested in wrestling at all. Yeah. But when you start talking about finishing moves, like you're finishing people off, like, like they're tapping yeah. for their life. There's mm -hmm. something about it. That yeah, was it was just different than like wrestling though, because you don't have to worry about pinning them. You gotta, there's so many like submissions you can get them in, like arm locks. Uh, it's either survive or die. Yeah, it's, it's right. not, yeah I, and I'm not, for the of you that wrestle, I'm not against it. You know, I'm yeah, not against yeah. it at all. But yeah, something about the fact that you can fight from your back in jujitsu, you can fight from up above. Oh yeah. Yeah, I just I, I'm with you. We we loved it. I still love it. I just can't do it. My back's a mess. But yeah, it's it was a lot of fun. Um, did did, did that did that help you become competitive, or do you think you already were competitive, Micah? 
Um, I think I already had competitive, um, like a nature in me, but then that just kind of gave me something else else to do when I was little. And just, you know, especially like when Isaiah did it with me, that's when I really felt myself getting really competitive because we were always angry when we, uh, we sparred against each other. So I think that's where I found myself starting to have a competitive nature though. Do you, do you remember when we had the mats in the house because the school, school closed? So <laughs> yeah, people, I do. Our school had mats and they didn't need them because there was no more school. So I took some home and we spread them out. Like we had a giant living room and we didn't have enough <laughs> furniture for all of our living room. Middle. So we literally had an area where they could just roll live. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we had I, some I wars. Time, you guys were fighting so on, uh, on the trampoline. I said, that's fine. You have to use uh, jujitsu rules. I do um, remember that. So mad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, we had some battles we really did it was amazing what's funny about isaiah he can't hear me right now is um he would never professor would say this if he was here he would not he had to test him for his belt against you because he would yep. never go hard against anybody else who's afraid he'd hurt him he's like oh that's, that's right, right. I'm <laughs> which i'm a little offended but at the same time i'm glad he can you know go hard against you <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty funny all right so then yeah, uh yeah. you went from jujitsu which we, we we all loved well, it's funny. You and I love Isaiah did it because he told me he had to do it. Yeah, he just showed up. <laughs> yeah, he just showed up. Yeah. I'll do it. Um, and then you played a little bit of basketball, right? I did. I did. And then when did you start playing soccer? It was, I think, about six years ago because I remember it's the 2014 World Cup and I started watching um, Messi and Ronaldo and all of them in that World Cup and some of the great things they did. And then I remember one night in particular, it was, it was I remember it was late. But there's a move, and it's like it's just a spin move around the ball. And I was in the back, or it was in the front yard, just doing that move over and over. And that's when I like started to really love the game. So about six years ago, yeah. Yeah, and I remember when um, when Ben Huffman, uh, who was at, who was in charge of the Y at the time, he was in charge of the Y League, and he told us, he goes, "Hey, there's a travel team here in Marion that you should uh, get him involved in. He would he would definitely excel that at that." And it's kind of the the rest is history. So you had a you had a good. Yeah. Uh, What's funny is, is, you know, people understand is that you're, you're probably about five years behind in soccer, oh, um, yeah. at least, and uh, you come a long way in six years. So it's been, yeah. it's been, it's been a fun process. All right. Uh, so we understand uh, a little bit about, about backgrounds uh, for you guys. So um, Mitchell, did you, were, were you homeschooled before DCS or what, what, what did you do? Um, so I was homeschooled for about uh, two years uh, before DCS. And then before then, uh, I grew up in Worthington Christian schools. And that's where your mom teaches that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Micah, how about you? What's your school looking like in the past? Uh, I was homeschooled when we moved here for about six years, I think, from like six to, six to 10. So I guess it's four years. And then my junior, senior year, I went to Delaware Christian. Okay. Yep. And um, obviously with this year ending the way that it is, uh, yeah. kind of the anticlimactic, uh, surreal kind of thing. Uh, I talked to Lissy last night. So this is for those of you that watched the Lissy thing. This was, I, I'm, um, I met with Lissy on Wednesday night and with these guys on Thursday night. It is so hard to check the days. Oh my yeah. God. I'm a mess when it comes to that. I thought I was going fishing today. Yeah. I kind of was Thursday. I'm like, that's, that's a letdown. <laughs> um, and anyway. Um, so, so what is, <laughs> what is your guys' biggest, um, Let's see how I say this. What 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 is your M Mitchell? What when when you found out school was officially closed? Like I, I knew it was I knew it was coming, but uh, obviously it's a uh, it was still like a really a real reality thing. What 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 was your initial reaction to what well, what we kind of knew was coming? I mean, for like obviously like it's sad, and I'm gonna miss my. Uh, friends and not like being having all those like laughs that we're supposed to have or that uh, other people have but my reaction with pretty much everything in life is like it's happened it's happening like let's move on to the next thing like how can I do the next thing better or yeah. like what my reaction to this drives what I do next yeah and my so point. I would just, like it's just like okay it, it happened yeah Mike how about you um, I think for for me, um, when we got from back from the Dominican, that's when we were, you know, first shut down. I heard it was going to be till, I think, till April or so we were going to be shut down. But then I, I already thought, like, we're not going back to school. There's no way. So then they announced it, and I just kind of thought, or it was just kind of like old news for me. But I just knew, like, okay, I'm here now. There's nothing I can do. I'm going to try to learn something while I'm in quarantine, keep training, keep doing what I'm doing, and just, you know, look forward to college. 
you, you it's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at the calendar. I don't think I think your your guys, our seniors at BTS, your last full week of school was the last full week of, of February. I think you're right. Because you guys went to the on the on the third or fourth. Yeah. Of, of mm -hmm. that great. That means you guys had a full week of school yeah. at home since February. That's yeah, that's right. You know. And, you know, and that's how yeah. I was talking to Lissy again last night. And she's like, you know, you just, crazy. You, you just take for granted the fact that, that we're going to go back to school. And now you're not, and now you, you never had a last day, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so, okay. So, Mike, you, you mentioned training. Um, those of you who don't know, Mike is going to play college soccer at Ohio Christian, Lord willing, uh, in the fall. Um, so, what's it look like to train without any games in sight? I mean, obviously, you know, you play club ball for Barcelona, but that's, that's not happening right now. So, yeah. so how do you train knowing that you don't know? Um, I think for me, like, I'm probably not training enough as I need to. I try to go outside every day, do some touch. Today I didn't. It was a little bit of a lazy day. Try to go outside and I do 20 to 30 minutes of touches. And then I juggle for 20 to 30 minutes. And then I'll do, I'll mess around with the ball, try to do like freestyle moves, you know, just, stuff that's not gonna help in a game but it's fun to learn and then i try to go to the back room do some body weight stuff push-ups you know all that kind of stuff i can do um dips uh and then i need to start running more as i started doing that i just kind of slacked on that but that's probably what it looks like for me i i, I think and again anybody who watches this so we, we live in central ohio the weather stinks right now um it's been dumb it snowed twice in like the last seven days um it's been ridiculous right so uh, you know, I I haven't really said anything to you because let's let's face it, it's snowing outside and we we don't have a place that you can actually yeah. run without being a mess. So I I think once the weather gets it gets a little bit better next next ten days, I think you'll you'll probably start looking towards that more. Mitchell, um, how about for you? I know that you're not looking to play necessarily college athletics, but um, what what does your day look like in the sense of all right, I'm moving on now. So what what do I what what, what does that look like for you? Yeah, it's definitely uh, different. Um, every day I wake up and um, try to get in some kind of like cardio or calisthenics or both. Um, just some kind of thing to stay uh, in shape or work out, get some of the stress off. Um, and then if the weather's nice, I'll go outside and I'll shoot around and uh, have a basketball hoop. So get to kind of shoot around a little bit. Um, and then uh, some days I get to go to the golf course because they haven't closed. Um, but obviously, like this week, it's been rainy and terrible, and so yeah. you can't go anywhere. Um, but other than that, uh, honestly, it's just been trying to find ways to entertain myself without, like, technology, without, like, being glued to the screen 24-7 yeah. um, in any way I can. You know, I think something that you mentioned, uh, Mike, you did too, and even Lissy did last night. Um, like, I was surprised – like the, the Lissy told me she's been sleeping in. I was like, wait, if Lissy's sleeping in, things are really serious right now. <laughs> and that's not a knock on Lissy. It's just like <laughs> very regimented, right? You know, I, I think it's good, like, like you said, Mitchell, to have a routine. But at the same time, um, you, can, you can rest. Look, the Lord's given us this for, for whatever reason. This has happened. Mm -hmm. We can debate. Well, I'll let people who are smarter than me debate the politics of it. Mm -hmm. um, but it is what it is. And so let's, let's rest, but let's also get our – our routine in and so you know maybe maybe you're a morning person maybe you're a night owl uh, our family is turning the night owls it's it's yeah. like i was like i told Ridiculous. my parents, i went to bed late last night i mean early last night oh what time did you go to bed 12 30 you know that's that was early. night before it was 2 2 30 i think it was <laughs> yeah it's it's game, you know so, yeah. it's just that's how we that's how we function like oh 10 o'clock let's get started with the game you know yeah and then it's 11 45 and like hey i'm hungry <laughs> you know yeah, <laughs> um, mitchell how's it look like for you is it is it late night early mornings <laughs> Honestly, it depends on the day um, and what time I go to bed the previous night because I always try to get in like eight to nine hours of sleep. So like there's some nights where I'm just like, okay, I've got energy. I can't go to bed. So I'll stay up and it'll be like at three o'clock um, or a little bit earlier. And then that'll drive the next day. I'll wake up at 11. Um, and so it's still like that, but like the past week, I've been pretty like I've gotten up at like nine or ten, which I consider still sleeping in a good bit because <laughs> yeah. usually I don't I don't ever sleep that late. Yeah. So Mitchell, you so you it just depends. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. 
That's funny. Mike, Micah does too. When I was your age, I was yeah. getting six or seven hours. I was good. Um, uh, Micah's like, that's not happening. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. I don't know how you two are going to do it in college, man. I'm telling you. College, we'll find I, a way. I think I lived in college like five and a half hours. For like oh, it'll change. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's something yeah, it'll change for sure for me. Especially the roommate, Mitchell. Dude, he's going to. Hey, don't make yeah, fun. He's yeah, not himself. Oops, hey, man. Sorry. He thrives on little sleep. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> it's the best time to make fun of him. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Um, so, have, have, have you the, do you either of you have a passage of scripture that maybe that, that's that, that's come back over and over again during this whole situation, or or some positive thought that you really thought about? Uh, for me, I, mean, I just uh, um, oh. go ahead, Micah. Okay, ahead. Uh, the one passage like I've always, you know, it's always just kind of stuck with me is Romans eight twenty eight. Um, for we know all things work together for good to them who love the Lord, and I know you know. If I'm serving my God faithfully, this is all going to work out for, for, you know, for his benefit. Yeah. And, you know, if I get something good out of it too, then that's great. But you know, ultimately, you know, it's to praise him. Yeah. It's praise the Lord. Mitch, how about you? Yeah. For me, um, a verse that always sticks through me, but is especially like prevalent in this time is first Corinthians ten thirty one. whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, all, all the glory of God. Right. And I think that it's just important because as we're quarantined, like, we don't want to spend our days doing stuff that's not beneficial or that's not like helping us in some way, um, either with our spiritual life or in anything we do, um, that we're not just stagnant through this time. Right. You yeah, can I, rest and not be stagnant. I, I agree with you. And that, you know, it's funny, my, my family, I, I've been doing a lot of cooking. Uh, I'm, I'm baking stuff nonstop. And it's amazing though. It really and my, my wife's like, what is all going to be? I'm like, listen, I have time to learn how to bake. I mean, you know, and I, I haven't, I haven't painted as much yeah. as I wanted to, but, but schooling is taking so long to do online for teachers. It's, it's insane, but you know, you're, you're, you're right. Um, oh, I'm sure, you know, we, 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 you know, it's, it'd be easy to sit here and complain about your senior year being ruined, but I, I keep trying to tell myself, like right now we're talking on brand new technology that, that 30 years ago didn't have. We have lights in our house. We have heating and air. Yeah. You know, it could be a whole lot worse. You know, it could be a whole lot worse than what it is. And, oh, and for sure. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I want to see both of you walk across the stage and get your diploma. Mm. Um, but at the same time, um, if, if the worst thing that happens in, in our lives is that we end up getting a diploma by some, some other method, right. you guys will still go to college and you know, that will all work itself mm. out. You know what I mean? I don't know. Yeah. So uh, Mitchell, what's, what's your thoughts on, on a, on a graduation, do you want to wait? Do you want to do? And I know you're going to discuss this next week with with people more important than I am. But, but uh, what, what are your thoughts on it? Um, I mean, I'm not really like my view of graduation is that it's not really for the students anyway. It's for the parents, um, at least in my family. So, Stop. like, oh. I'm pretty indifferent when it comes to graduation. Uh, I just know that it, it like it'll happen at some point. Yeah. And regardless of what it looks like, like I'll be happy to be there and obviously Mike, get my diploma. Um, I, you know, I just kind of want to graduate, go to college. You know, I'd rather have something that's kind of <laughs> informal and small. I don't really like the whole, uh, you know, walk across the stage for me personally. You're I like weirdo. Whole, you know that? I, yeah. I don't. I don't. So, so you know, again, <laughs> you just be that. You know, Micah played in the game this this past fall at River Valley. There had to have been. There had to be two thousand people in the stands that night. It was it was packed. it was packed. It was it was amazing. They were so loud. I'm on the sideline. I'm yelling at Coach Owings, and he couldn't hear me. Micah gets boot. Micah gets injured <laughs> late in the Dude. game. You you cramped up, mm-hmm. and they are booing you off the. They're field. screaming my number. They're booing me. It was Your amazing. Number. They're losing their mind because I he, loved it. No, <laughs> because it was. I, and he comes over. We're giving him instructions. He can't hear us. We put him back on the field. And that doesn't bother you. But, uh, but 200 people in a graduation is going to bother you. It's, yeah, it's different. <laughs> it's completely different. No, it's like the soul. Like, like, you know, they were booing you. Like, no, it's different, dude. They <laughs> boo me because they hate me because I'm good. That's what I say. <laughs> I can boo <laughs> Mike at graduation if that helps him. <laughs> <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> honk or horn, and he gets it to boo him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh that's great. All right, so those are some really good thoughts, guys. Um, 
let's see. Um, I think one thing that I think I, I was going to say was this, was that it sounds like the two of you are like me, that um, I'm not against traditions, but I, I often wonder why we have traditions. Like what, what's the, you know, what's the, what's the reason for, is it just the way we've always done it? And uh, I'm not necessarily a traditionalist when it comes to most things. Sure. Like, well, why not do, do it differently? I, I, I do agree with you uh, both that as weird as this time is, let's go non-traditional because making it try to be traditional is going to be a really tough thing. I mean, think about it. If we have a, if we have a normal graduation, there's a possibility that if we did that, people still can't see it because they can't travel. I mean, it just complicates everything. So I'm like, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know. I'm, again, I don't have the answers. I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah. That's Even if we could do a traditional, though, it's 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 not going to because I mean, if we're going to have it in August, we're going to know like it's not normal. So well, here's the other problem: if we have it in August, like like several, you won't be able to be there. If there's no. Yeah, way. I know, and that's I. Yeah. You know, that's the first date I thought of. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it just is what it is. I mean, if if yeah. if you guys are playing college sports. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, we don't know what's going to happen in the fall, but that's that's a whole other problem. Yeah. Um. So I think Mitchell, you have been watching The Last Dance, right? Oh yeah, I have. Mike, you haven't watched it, have you? I, I have. Yeah. I need to. It's been great I to. I, I have people that are very disappointed in me. Oh, because, come on, Micah. Because they know they know the kind of Jordan guy I am. My own kids haven't watched it. I know. I'm. I need to. I keep telling myself to. I listen. I I yeah. told I told him Sunday night. If the house burns down, leave me alone. I'll be fine. <laughs> Just leave me in here. I'll be fine. You know? <laughs> so, uh, so Mitchell, what 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 was your? I, mean, I get um, that. Because I, I mean, I, obviously, you didn't grow up with with, with Jordan. What, what was something that you learned from the last dance that you did not know or that you didn't realize? Hmm. You know, like obviously, I didn't grow up like watching him live or anything like that. But my dad was a huge Michael Jordan fan to the point of like the first books I remember were literally scrapbooks of like Michael Jordan's like years on the bulls and like winning championships and like playing games <laughs> with my dad like as bulls like there's no other team you could possibly play with like that is who you played with so like in a sense i did i did grow up with it but obviously not live yeah. um, so a lot of it like i had already known and already um heard and also like as a huge basketball fan like i have like i've read all about it and um, but I thought that it was just always his mindset is just so above everybody else's. Um, yeah. And so that's always like a like great point of like emphasis for me. Anytime I see anything he's in um, or doing, like just his mindset is yeah. on another level. Yeah, it, you know, you're, you're right. You know, we, I, I was telling somebody else uh, last week that um, we, we give, I, I think Kobe was smart because he coined that phrase Mamba mentality. But that mom mentality is from Jordan. I mean, that's yeah. That's where that's where Kobe learned that nonsense. Oh yeah, for sure. And I mean, Jordan just you know, granted, for sure. You know, Jordan's got the logo. Kobe's got the mom mentality uh, trademark. But it's it's one and the same, really. It's just uh, mm -hmm. I, I I was surprised. I didn't realize how I didn't realize two things. And I watched all that. I I watched the whole thing happen. I didn't realize how poor Scott yeah. was growing up. And I didn't realize. Uh, yeah. I didn't realize how small Pippen was when he, went, when he got to college. And was I knew he was the train. I, he was like the equipment guy, but I didn't realize how small he was in college. Six foot one as a freshman. Yeah, that's insane. Thanks. You know. Oh yeah. I think it's crazy. Uh, like if you read or see all this, and it'll come out like through this that like those big three: Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, and Dennis Rodman none of them like were highly recruited or like Jordan got cut from his team as a sophomore. Yep. Scotty Pippen didn't play in college. Dennis Rodman got discovered in college. Yep. Any like, idea. None of them were huge superstars. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was like, they've all like had to crawl their way up and then became the most dominant team ever. Yeah. Uh, one thing that was mentioned in the documentary already, it'll be mentioned again, I'm sure was, you know, their practices were brutal. <laughs> you know, brutal. Um, your oh, your yeah. dad will know this name. Um, I, I got a chance one year to work with um, a guy named Cliff Livingston. Uh, he played for the Bulls first three P and he told us this was in, I met him in the late nineties. He told us, he said, dude, there was fist fights and stitches in practice on a regular basis. He goes, and Pippen and <laughs> made sure that's how it's going to be. He said, he said, they wanted stuff as bad as possible. So the games were easy. 
He said, that's how it was. He goes, and you just didn't question him. There's fist yeah. fights. But he said the media was closed off. There's no social media. It, it was a different era for, for, for sure. You know, the thing, the thing that yeah, drives me nuts. Sure. Yeah, the thing that drives me crazy is, is, is it's okay to appreciate LeBron and MJ. They're, it's different eras. They're different games. They're different creatures. I, I mean, I'm a, I'm a Jordan guy, but if somebody yells at me and says, LeBron's better, great. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you're happy. You know, I, I, I've seen them both. I know what I, I know. What I, know. I, know I know what I've seen. Um, but if somebody interprets that data differently, I mean, look, you're talking about one and one A or one and two, however you want to look at it. They're both incredible. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I can't wait for Sunday night because I'm looking forward to, to watching the next two episodes. I can tell you that. <laughs> well, I'll watch them this week. So I can oh, watch yeah. Sunday. Us too. Yeah, yeah Mike has got to watch it. I know. It. I have to. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> I, I, know they're, I know they're on YouTube, Michael, already because I, I looked today that they're on YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm sure they'll be, I'm sure they'll be, they'll be re aired. It's kind of like. It's kind of like to me when people fuss about Cristiano Ronaldo and, and, and Messi. Yeah, I mean, they're both beasts for whatever reason they are. Messi's just super quick. Ronaldo's just a specimen. But they're both doing crazy things with the ball and in the game. So. Yeah, that's, that, that, that's just it. They're just, yeah. they're just, they're just special athletes. It, you know, it, it kind of reminds me, and I, I, you, I guess, Mitchell, you probably saw some of it, but, um, you know, I'm not a golf guy at all. Like, I, I play like three rounds of my life. And they were the longest eight hours of my life, but that's all I'm thinking <laughs> Um, But when I watch, I would watch when Tiger Woods, I saw him in his prime. When he was in his prime, I didn't want to miss a match or a, match or a weekend because you knew Tiger was going to do something that you couldn't miss. Yeah. And I remember, I remember as, a, as, a, as a teenager, as a young adult, oh, the Bulls are on. That was code for... You don't want to miss because Jordan might do something tonight you're never going to see again in your life. And, 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 and those are the two athletes mm -hmm. that I would look at and say, listen, LeBron's an incredible specimen. You can't argue it's athleticism. But there was something about the, the, the Bulls, the, the Jordan Bulls. You just couldn't figure it out. But you're like, you can't miss this because you might miss something. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel like that way with, with Messi, yeah. Yeah. With, with Ronaldo. It's, it's just different. You know what I mean? Yeah, it really is. Yeah, yeah I, I think it goes back to that mindset thing because uh, Tiger has that mindset of I'm going to win. It's going to happen regardless of what happens. Like there's one tournament that he went into and he, his doctor told him that he wasn't going to be able to play for like six months. And he was like, no, I'm playing this weekend and I'm winning. And that's, that's what he did. And so it's just that different mentality. Mm -hmm. Mitchell, did you see that interview just recently that they, that they show with um... – Tiger Woods, and I think it was Curtis Strange before his first tournament. And they were, and Curtis Strange was interviewing him. Mm -mm. And he's asking what his goal was for the weekend. And he says, well, my goal, my goal is, is to win. And Curtis Strange, live on air, loses his mind. He's like, well, um, we'll fix that. <laughs> and he's like, look, he says, I know I, I don't mean to offend you. He says, but I, my, my mentality is, is why try if I can't, if my goal is not to win. And Curtis Strange goes, he looks at the camera and he's like, He'll learn. Exactly. What a hilarious thing now looking back at all the tournaments that, 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 that uh, Tiger won. He's just a different cat. That's just how he's wired. That mindset and, is just crazy. Yes. Yep. And he never did learn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cur Curtis Strange didn't get it. Tiger Woods knew. It's just, it's just hilarious. You know what I mean? And, and that's something that, you know, I've, I've told Micah before is yeah. that, you know, it, and, and, and obviously, you know, we don't have a, a LeBron, Tiger, MJ. I'm, so I'm not trying to compare you guys, but I've told Micah right. before. Look, if, if you want to play at this level, whatever that level is, you got to put work in that other people think is, is foolish because otherwise it's never going to – you're never going to reach that potential. And that's true in school. That's true in anything. You know, and if, if – if, let's put it this way. If the average person in high school knew the hours of Micah that you put in on a soccer field, they would roll their eyes and, and look at you like you've lost your mind. Yeah. You know? They'd probably say I have no life. <laughs> Well, it, it's not even that. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 they don't understand yeah. why somebody would put that much effort into something that you may not – see, here's the thing about sports that's so great, is that sports is like a great gamble because mm -hmm. you may never get anything out of that. You know? Like, 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 like if you had money mm -hmm. and you knew how to invest, you're getting money out of that. Mm -hmm. You know, but you could go out and you could train for five years and you're never going to make it. And, mm -hmm. and I think people who don't have that mindset, they don't get it. Mm -hmm. Do you, 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 you agree, Mitchell? Yeah. 
Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's think, definitely, like, I don't think people get, like, when you're competitive, like, you have to do things that other people aren't doing in order to, like, keep that, like, I know, like, Mike and I have talked a lot about being competitive, and it's that, like, we're going to work hard because we don't like losing, yeah. and so we're going to do things that other people aren't going to be doing. Yep. Yeah, and some people, I think, like, some people see it as, like, a, like a try-hard mentality, but, like, I think for, you know, you and me, Mitchell, like, even playing, you know, knockout, you know, just for fun, you and I are going to try our hardest because, for one, it's fun to, to, be, to be good, and then it's fun to win. So why not do our best to win? That's, I mean, that's kind of mindset. Yeah, that for sure. <laughs> for sure. There's no point in playing. Right, right. I, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I'm sure Mike has heard this story before. I was a senior in high school. I had a bad ankle. And um, so I had it taped every day before practice for basketball season. And um, there's a girl on my team, girl on the girls' team named Lisa. She's my, she's my best friend in high school, and she's a good shooter. And um, so we, we would play pickup or we play one on one every day because she she and I got taped right away. So here we are in the gym by ourselves, one some one other person, and here we are. We're doing our thing, and she she got the ball first. She scores, uh, pull up jumper, and then I, and then she it's make it take it, and she does something. I she misses. I go to rebound it, roll my ankle, right. So I'm laying on the ground, I'll never forget this, I'm laying on the ground and my ankle is, it's shot. And I said, uh, I'm going to have to stop. She grabs the ball. She goes, good, I won. And I went, no, you didn't. She's like, yeah, if, you, if, you, if you're done, you quit. I won. Okay. And like, it wasn't like she was like, you know, oh, I'm sorry, I won. It was, I won. Yeah. I'm about to let everybody know, right? And I'm like, no, you, so right. here we are. We're arguing over this, right? And she goes, then check it. And she throws it at me. Like, I'm laying on the ground. Then check it. All right? So I stand up. I'm like, you didn't win. She's like, well, then, well, then let's go. Suck it up. So we played. I beat her. But I, I was dying. You know what I mean? Oh. And people are like, well, why would you? Yeah. Listen, listen, this is the mentality. Yeah. Now, I'm not suggesting you go out there on a, on a you know, ankle that you're going to ruin. Um, you got to know your mm -hmm. limits. But at that day, I knew. I rolled it. It, it, it hurt. Mm -hmm. Listen, I ain't letting her win. There's no way. It ain't happening. Ain't I, if it on yeah. crutches, I'm beating her that day. Yeah. And some people, like you said, Mitchell, they don't get that. And I don't know how to mm -hmm. help them because that's just how I'm wired. Like, if, if we're playing video games, I want to win. Mm -hmm. I'm playing Catan, I want to win. For sure. Yeah. And me and Mitchell even talked about the video game thing the other yeah. day. Is, you know, he said he's playing Rocket League or, you know, even I'd be playing it. And then, you know, we want to wait and we get really quiet you know, while we're on the mic, just trying to have fun. And then we'd all both get really quiet and trying mm -hmm. to win and stuff like that. It's just, it's just fun to win. So. Yeah, it is. It, 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 you know what else too, though? Not only is it fun to win, but it's fun to compete and compete well. Right. Right. You know, I, I mean, so, sometimes the winning and losing look, I mean, for sure. I know Mike, you, you've been in this situation, Mitchell, you have too, where you're, you're playing at somebody and they're just 10 times better. You're not going to yeah. win, but you can compete. Right. You know? Right. It's like play, like me playing basketball against Mitchell. And Mitchell. it's like, what can I take away from this? Sure. Right. Yeah, that's a good point, Mitchell. Uh, so I, I, knew a guy, I knew a guy about five, eh, it's probably 10 years ago now. He was playing, no, no, it was longer than that. He was playing AAU the same time LeBron was. And he's like, dude, we're playing LeBron's team in AAU. I can't wait. And he, this kid was like, he's a, <laughs> we're going to get boat race. But I'm going to say I played against LeBron James. He came back. He's like, man, he, he had broke, LeBron had broken his wrist. So he didn't play that tournament. He was so bummed out. He's, out. he's like, listen, I want to see what I look like against the best. Yeah. So many people are afraid to measure themselves against the best. It's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It really is. Oh, yeah. For sure. I don't know what that reason is. I don't know if it's because they're afraid yeah. of failure. That's got to be what it is. It's just they don't want the embarrassment of failure. And, like, you're going to fail in life, so I don't know why you're, you know, afraid to fail right in that moment that people are probably going to yeah. forget later. Yeah. So. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I, I think I failed so many times in sports. I just got used to, I got really good at it, but I never understood the idea that, you know, you're never going to fail. I, mean, yeah. I, yeah. I failed school. I failed all the time. So I, I got really good at it. I don't, I don't know what the, yeah. what the big fear of it is. And it, it's, yeah. I don't know, it's the thing in society right now. I don't, I don't get it. Yeah. I don't. It's why, it's why I love sports though. It's just, mm -hmm. it, it kind of mm -hmm. pulls the playing field. Yeah. yeah. The uh, the everybody like wins mentality drives me crazy because like even when I was a kid and I'd play stuff with my dad, if I knew that my dad was letting me win, which he, he didn't, but if I had known 
Or like, even if he did, and now I don't know, like that would have driven me so, like I would have been angry that he let me win. Yeah. And people just, like people don't have that now. Yeah, yeah like, no, right. They're just not raised like that. Micah, who, who was that? Who was the, uh, what was the radio host we were, we were listening to? And he's like, I'll never let my kid win a game of one-on-one. Who was that? You remember that? Oh, <laughs> wasn't that uh, Common Man? Was it? I don't, mm, I don't know now. I was done. The, kid, the guy's like, I refuse to let him even score. He's like, he'll never score again. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, that sounds like something Colin May would say. It was but, a funny thing ever. I'm like, listen, yeah, I, uh, I, I don't understand this idea of like, let's, let's let, like you said, Mitch, let, let's let everybody win. It just uh, blows my mind. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I don't think it helps because, you know, I, I think, I think the, and this is what happened, I think, even right now in our society is people think, well, this isn't fair. So let's, so let's, let's get a do over. Well, mm-hmm. this is life right now. I mean, you know, again, politics aside, there's, there is no school. There may not be any vacations. There's not this. There's not that. Right. We don't have control over those things. The Lord does. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, he, we, we, we have been blessed beyond measure. I was, telling, I was telling somebody this the other day. You know, everybody's panicking about we don't have this food. We don't have that food in the grocery store. But the bottom line is there's still lots of food in the grocery stores. Yeah. It's not what we, it's not what we want, maybe. Yeah. Right? But there's still plenty. I, it was right. somebody, who was it? Maybe Mr. Smith. He was telling me, he goes, he goes oh, no, I know who it was. It was Blake. And now uh, Blake, Blake's going to be on here probably next week. Blake said, look, he said, I went in to buy some hamburger. He goes, there was vegan hamburgers. He said, I don't want a vegan hamburger. He said, I'll wait till the real hamburgers come back. He said, but if there's something that, if I had to eat, there's something to eat. Just not what I yeah. want. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. So, um, Mitchell, yeah. tell me your major in college. So, like. Yeah, go ahead. What's my ma- What's my major? Is that yeah. what you asked? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's psychology. So, um, but I want to do like the research part of it. And I'd love to do something with sports down the line. Yeah, I don't want to do a, like sports psychology because it's like very hit or miss. Mm-hmm. But I'd love to do some kind of like study on how sports and um, I think it'd be really interesting to do something with that in the future. That'd be a lot of fun. I've always, I've always found psychology mm-hmm. fascinating. For sure. Yeah, a lot of. Have, have you taken any, any psychology oh, yeah. classes yet? So I've taken a Gen Psych uh, class. Yeah. Um, which was super interesting, but like also my sister's in a doctorate program to get her uh, doctorate in psychology. So we always like we go back and forth, just like saying like different theories or like just talking about different terms like all the time so in a sense like i've learned a lot more from talking with her that's cool that's real cool michael what's your, what, what are you gonna major in yeah uh i am majoring in sports sports management business is what it is and then i'm gonna get my minor in coaching what, what do you want to do do you, do you know yet uh i would like to be an athletic director that's the plan as of now and then i want to coach you know some kind of soccer down the line which is why i'm getting my coaching minor yeah. Lots of, lots of licenses in your, in your future, right? With all the yeah. Lots. US, U.S. system, pyramid, whatever it is going yeah, on. Uh, and Mitch, and so Mike is going to go play soccer at Ohio Christian University. Mitchell, where are you going to go to school at? Cedarville University. Cedarville University. Same place that, uh, that list is going. All right. Uh, that's cool. Uh, are, are you, are you going to try to play golf there or, or, or can you play golf? I don't, I don't, I don't know how it works there. What's, what's the, Mitchell Freeze. Other so I have like offers from uh, different smaller colleges, um, but really I only had like eyes for Cedarville. I really only wanted to play at Cedarville or only go to Cedarville. Um, so I reached out to their coach, and basically they have nobody. Nobody is was a senior on their team last year. So lose anybody, so their team's completely full. They don't have a practice team, and they don't do tryouts. Oh. So. Pretty much the window on that's closed. Yeah. Unfortunately. So hmm. like Micah wanted to play at, at Cedarville. Coach Farrow. Yeah, it's just unfortunate timing. Yeah. Micah wanted to play at Cedarville. Great coach, uh, Coach yeah. Farrow. It's but, yeah, it's um, nice there. It's a different right now they're really high level. Um, yeah. And and they're NCA D two. And they're really what are they were they top twenty five in the country at some point? Yeah, that's something like that. They're recruiting, you know, big boys, you know, wow. high speed, just, Big, I think the one dude I met was like maybe six two. That was like the average size of the people. Great yeah. athletes and yeah, great players. Yeah, Which I'm five yeah. ten, so that's pretty unlikely of me being varsity oh, yeah. there. So, 
Yeah, they're, they, they are – Cedarville is rolling right now in soccer. Uh, they've got a really good program. He's a great coach. Great, great guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, the several times I talked to him, just a, just a very upfront uh, – mm-hmm. it's, 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 it's a great university. It really is. I'm looking forward to seeing you play at uh, Ohio Christian too. Um, I think that's going to be a great, a great fit for you as well. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So we already covered the Bulls, covered, this, covered Jordan, covered the last dance. Um, so, Micah, um, let's look at this for a second. So it looks like right now, today, the date, I have to figure out what the date is. 23rd, I think. Is it? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, 23rd of April. Uh, okay. The Bundesliga, which is the German uh, top league, is supposed to be making games on what, May the – May 9th. What do you think of that? I am excited to have some – I don't care if it's behind closed doors. I don't care if there's no fans. I want to see – I want to see them play. I just – I want us to have some live sports – you know, I've been going, I've been watching, um, you know, several, I just got done watching Kevin De Bruyne, some of his highlights, um, some old Man United players. I just, I want to see some live sports again. Just, I well, just so, slow down for a minute. So who's Kevin De Bruyne? For those of you who don't know who that, who that is. Yeah, I got I Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> Kevin, De Bruyne, <laughs> Kevin De Bruyne, he is a midfielder who plays in the English league on the team Manchester United, or no, Man City. Man City. Whoa. Yeah, well, that was pretty you, bad. That's pretty bad. Okay. Yeah, I don't know about yeah. that. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if you saw this today, Micah, but they said that, um, ESPN FC said that, uh, La Liga, which is the Spanish league has said that there'll be no fans for the remainder of 2020. Really? Yep. They said, they said there will be no fans for the remainder of 2020. Uh, and I, I think that might what happens worldwide. What do you, what, what do you think, Mitchell? Yeah, I could definitely see it going that way. Um, It'll be interesting to see how that changes, like, in every sport, how players play. Mm. Like, yeah. if they're the same or it, like, changes the momentum of things. Yeah, I, I agree with you because – It'll be real interesting. My thing. You know, can, can you imagine – let's say the let's say the NBA comes back in, in, in July, okay? NBA comes back in July, and they, and they mm. play the playoffs in, in August, September – what what if their hosts what what if the what if the Lakers what if LeBron is hoisting the Larry O'Brien Trophy with no fans? I, <laughs> it'd just be weird, like. Won't it? Yeah. There's no other way to put it. It'd just be super weird. Yeah, I'm, I mean, if if I'm a player, I want to play. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's just weird. I think the the, mm-hmm. the fans, you know, I'm not gonna say that's the reason they play sports but it hypes it hypes you know it makes the game a lot more exciting a lot more enjoyable to play oh, yeah as, for sure as an athlete well i don't know if you heard lebron but you know he he is mm-hmm. that 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 he he wouldn't play oh dear that was terrifying <laughs> hey, buddy. uh well lebron says that he won't play without fans hold on guys we have a timeout here hang on <laughs> this will be great now i'll be able to hear everybody without screaming all right can you guys hear me we can Okay. Yeah, I, I LeBron yeah. says he won't play without fans. Really? I I, I think there's mm. two things there. Number one, I think he's just talking because he wants to say that. But number two, think about LeBron's career. He's never played in front of nobody before. Yeah, that's true. There's always been like here was when I, I know like right. Coach Bob yeah. saw him play AAU ball. There was fans for AAU. You know what I mean? Oh my. Oh yeah. It's gonna be a complete shock. Yeah, he's that's where he's comfortable. Absolutely. I mean, he's real I, uncomfortably. Yeah. I mean, I I watched him play high school ball and there was 18,000 there for a high school game. So, mm-hmm. it's I, I think his yeah. situation that's and where crazy. he's talking, yeah, it is crazy, Mike Mitchell. I think I think his his thinking is so different from the average. Like I I I played most of my career in front of 10 people, 20 people, who cares? Yeah. But for somebody who's used to seeing thousands. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's just different. I, I don't know how they're going to mm-hmm. – I don't know how they're going to deal with that because, I, like, like, like with the NFL, the, the, the NFL says they would only lose, what was it, 15% of their revenue without fans because that's how big the TV deal is. Mm-hmm. The NFL will, will survive this without fans. I don't know about college basketball. I don't know about the NBA. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a do different – Do you think players are just going to lose, like, motivation with the NBA or saying, like, LeBron, do you think he'll just, like, lose motivation to want to play, like – I, I, I don't think LeBron will because of his place in, in his career. Le, LeBron knows his window is about four years. Mm-hmm. Now, I, I do think this. I think the guy who is in year five with a bad knee and 
and the next CBA is coming up and his next contract's iffy, that's a different story. You know? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the guy who's in the lower league, especially yeah. soccer. I mean, listen, the lower league's going to get killed. Yeah. The lower leagues in soccer could be de- decimated. That's a different story. But I, I think the, the cream of the crop in the NBA, I don't think that's a, that's a big threat. What do you, Mitchell, do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah, I agree. I think that those players usually, um, I think once you get to that level, um, a lot of the championship teams will still have that motivation. I think it'll be the other teams uh, that aren't quite on that level that will, you'll see a dip in because they're like for them, I think they'll see it that way. Right. I don't see many, especially with like the way that like the NBA had thing with like load management and how it's all going. I think the yeah. lower level teams will be worse yeah I, I i think you're right i i think the lower level teams are gonna have a huge issue with this and and i, I you know they, they they're you know they're threatening about college football i'm like man you can't you mess with college football the south may rise again i mean it, it could get ugly down there yeah you know cool. the, the sec is a different animal man it's <laughs> <laughs> i mean I, I i listen we we lived in knoxville yeah. when we first got married and my wife worked downtown and that was the year that Peyton Manning announced he was coming back for a senior year. And um, she said her office stopped. They're sitting by the radio. They're listening to his broadcast. People, girl, people are crying. Like, they're crying. <laughs> I, I worked for a furniture store. And uh, I remember the first, the first, first fall I was there, uh, I said, hey, by the way, uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow. They said, tomorrow's game day. I said, okay. They said, no, no, on home games, we're closed. What are you talking about? They closed the stores on game day in Knoxville. The only thing open is bars and restaurants. I, I said, what are you talking about? I said, what do you mean? We're not, we're not, we're not open during a game. Are you crazy? Huh? Holy cow. I had no idea. I just, it, you mess people's football. It's going to get, yeah. ugly. I, I just, I, and, crazy. and again, I don't, I don't know the science uh, behind the, the virus, but um, you know, at, at some point our economy has to, has to begin to carefully find ways to do what it needs to do without um, shutting down all of society. Right. right. But fo- football, if football starts getting hit, uh, we'll, we'll figure something out really, really fast. Yeah. I, would, <laughs> I, would, I would think. Um, sure. So let's see, uh, M- Mitchell, uh, what do you oh. do? Obviously your dad's a pastor. Yeah. Um, what, what do you do at the church to, oh, yeah. to, <laughs> to, to help things? Man, uh, right now, I uh, every week I'm running the slides for our live stream. Um, Doing good too. They're, they're getting better, by the way. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, but honestly, it's just, just a lot of doing whatever he needs uh, on like a weekly basis. Like we go out a couple times uh, to the church or just run like little small errands for him. Um, it's honestly just whatever he needs, and that's with the quarantine or without the quarantine sure that stuff happens what what's the, the what what's the most challenging part of being a pastor's kid hmm. give me a second here you're good mikey i'm, I'm gonna come through the same thing because you know the you know the drill too so yeah uh, yeah mitchell froze up there i think there he is yeah hmm I don't know. I think uh, the most challenging part uh, for me is, um, well, I mean, there's just a lot of, um, like, there's a lot of time where it's like, it's just a lot of like jumping back and forth. Like, uh, we're going to go see this person, then we're going to go see this person. And um, ultimately, it's great. And like, we love doing it. But it's a lot of especially dad specifically like spends a lot of time doing that um and I don't even know how he does it but like he's always somehow balanced like spending time with us and spending the rest of his time with the church basically and everybody um and so I'd say probably the hardest part um is to some extent like sharing my dad but I mean he does a really good job at it yeah 
Micah, how about you? The hardest part of being a pastor's kid, um, you know, I, I don't really know. I know one of it, one part of it is for me personally, uh, there was not a lot of kids my own age. So I had to keep reminding myself, you're going to church to worship Jesus. You're not, you know, it's great that you get to fellowship with people, yeah. but you're going to church to worship God and to learn about God, you know? So I think, you know, it did get hard some days. I didn't want to be there. Some days I didn't even pay attention. You know, I'm going to be honest, yeah. but you know, after a while, I just kind of learned like, you know, you're not here for fellowship. You're here to learn about Jesus. What, I what do you keep focusing on that? Yeah, that's yeah. a good thought too. Um, what both of you for the, this one, what, what is, what is one thing that you think, what's something about a pastor's family that you think people don't know that they probably should know? I answered the last one. What's that? First, so yeah. Sure. Yeah. That's yeah. You, you probably answered it all at once is the fact that just how, how much pe- pa- pastors go, mm-hmm. uh, go, go, go. And just, um, but what, what, what is something that if, if you could tell somebody you did, you don't know this about, about a pastor or their family. Yeah. No, I was saying it's Micah's oh. turn to answer first. So oh, I, oh I got you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think for me yeah, yeah. it's just, um, I'd want people to know that the pastors are kind of going through, they're, they're still stressed too. You know, they still, you know, have human emotion and stuff like that. Cause I know for you, dad, you know, you put you were, you always looked like you were fine and calm, but um, you know, at the end, I kind of knew like you were stressed for the most of the time. And yeah. I wish people knew like how stressed you really got, mm-hmm. you know, that way they didn't come talking to you about complaining about the little things in the church, yeah. you know, and they just kind of help them be more compassionate that way. By the way, it's kind of funny. All those little things don't matter now that we're not in church anymore, do they? You know, no, they do not. No, they do not. You know, Mitchell, how about you? Yeah. So I think one of the things that um, a lot of people don't always understand is that there's so many different like semantics and different things. And ultimately it's impossible to please everybody. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that come and we should do this or we should do this and some of those ideas are taken into consideration but we can't take everybody's ideas into consideration so I know it's always like a struggle for my dad to figure out like what needs to be done and what doesn't need to be done Um, and I I don't think a lot of people understand that because they just hear like oh my idea wasn't like is not going into uh, fruition and yep uh, and not everybody's can that's a great, that's a great point. You know, um, I, I tell people like this all the time. So, you know, Mrs. Miner is our principal or headmaster. I, I, I view it like this. My job is to make sure that I give Mrs. Miner as much information as possible so that she can make the best decision for everybody. That means that she may hear my info and go, I don't care or, Oh, that's good FYI, but you don't know something else that I know. So I always view it like, all right, she might need to know this, not so that she takes my idea, was it was so that she's as well informed as possible. If 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 people took that mentality towards their right. pastor, it'd be totally different. Because yeah, Mitchell, would, Mitchell, would. you're you're right, Mike, Mike, you're right. You know, if for sure, um, you know, if 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 for example, if if we're debating an order of service, for example, you can, you can only do so much with an order of service. Yeah. If if you get fifteen ideas, you can't do all fifteen at one shot. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so I I think you're right, Mitchell. Right. That if people understood that, just because just because the pastor thinks your, that your idea is great, it doesn't mean you can do it for X, Y, Z, you know? And that's a leadership thing. And I, I, obviously, it, it, it's, it's uh, some people don't get that either. But that's a, that's a huge, I think, that, I think that's a really good thought. Yeah. It's really, really, really good thought. Yeah. Uh, Mitchell, are you, are you big into football? Um, I'm into college football, uh, mostly Ohio State, but yeah. not really NFL. Okay. Well, cause I was wondering, because the draft is tonight. I didn't know if you cared or not. I, I don't really care per se. I, I just want to see how much of a disaster it is since it's all like we're doing right now. I, I want to see that. But other than that, I don't really care. Mitchell froze. It's kind of rough. Yeah. There he is. Yeah. Yeah. All it's right. just yeah. Um, and, and anything you two want to say to our student body? Um, obviously we're not going to have a normal end of school year. So, may, so may, maybe, you know, maybe some kid comes to you and they say, Hey, um, what's some advice that you would give me as I prepare for my freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year? What, what, what would be any advice that you might give to them that you say, Hey, I wish I could tell, have told you this in person, 
but you know, here, here we are. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can go. Um, I told the uh, guys at the beginning when we were in Michigan, I told them uh, from the start of this year, um, and I think we've really worked on it is uh, actually something my dad told me, which is he said, uh, the thing I regret most about high school is that I wish I would have known or understood the impact I have of people in high school and how oh, yeah. that's gone after you get out of high school. And so it's just that, uh, and I wish we would have thought about it earlier. Like I wish I would have been told that earlier because uh, you have to make a choice to impact or lead as much as you can as early on or else like nothing is going to change. And um, ultimately it's just going to get worse. Yeah, that's a, that's a good thought. Um, I, I always remember when I was in high school at Grace Academy in Chattanooga, uh, one thing like that popped up in my, my thoughts. So I was, I was a popular person. I was one of the older kids, played everything, uh, played soccer, basketball, and track. And I remember we were signing yearbooks, and this girl comes up to me and one of my friends, and she wants us to sign her yearbook because we were the in crowd, and I had no idea who she was. Like, I didn't know. I didn't know. I, I didn't know if I've ever seen her before. Like she handed me the yearbook. Like, yeah, I'll sign it. I'm like, Psst, who is that? And they're like, I don't know. Hold on a second. You know? And we're like, and she's like, man, you guys are such a inspiration to us. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, who, who are you? You know what I mean? And I, I, I think you're right, Mitchell. People don't realize <laughs> uh, how important it is of, of your impact while you have it. That, that's a, that's a good thought. Mike, Mike, how about you? Mm-hmm. I think going along with the same you know, point Mitchell just said for, one, um, you know, have an attitude that it's going to leave a positive impact on people. But, um, you know, two other things to go along with that. I'd say one, mm-hmm. work hard while you're in high school, you know, um, work hard on what your schoolwork, um, you know, because for me, I'm, I'm proud of, you know, when I work hard on my work and when I do fairly successful on it, you know, so I'd say to other people, just work hard. Uh, and then another thing is just enjoy it. You know, um, don't stress out about, you know, don't constantly try to live stressed. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're taking too many college classes, you know, maybe do one less. Yeah, if, you're, if you're super duper stressed about it, just try to enjoy and try to learn where you're at. Um, you know, try to have a good impact on people. I'd say, you know, and, and I think what you said is good because you, you said work hard first. Um, you can work hard and enjoy it. Um, yeah. You know, I, I know both of you well enough oh, yeah. to know that you both work hard, but you also enjoy life. You enjoy friends, you enjoy people. Uh, and I think you can, you can even work hard at enjoying people. Mm-hmm. That, that's a, th- you know, some people, some people, um, discussions and conversations don't come yeah. naturally. You can even work hard at that. It's, it's good to work hard at having relationships. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, I think, I think that's an important thought yeah. because, um, that's going to build for what you guys mm-hmm. are going to do in, in college, you know? Yeah. So that's Mitchell, true. you, you already know your roommate, yeah. right? For college. I actually, yeah, go ahead. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Mitchell. Yeah. Yeah, I actually uh, just finished this book. It's called Everybody Always. And it was really, really good. And it was uh, about that. It's written by Bob Goff. Show uh, the cover again. time, like, Christian author. And it's about, like, embodying. Yeah, it's about uh, embodying uh, love and um, that Jesus showed. Um, and it was a really, it's really well written. It was an enjoyable book. Like, I'm not a reader at all. Uh, but it was a really enjoyable book. You're about to be a reader. That, like getting better at showing love to people. Yeah. Jerry Mitchell, you're about That's to be right. a reader. Yeah. <laughs> Just wait for college oh, psychology yeah. classes. You're going to be a reader before oh, long. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I will. That's good. All right. Well, listen, um, I'm not going to hold us any longer. This has already been, I think, almost an hour. But um, oh, appreciate goodness. you two jumping on today. And uh, I, I wish both of you the, uh, the very best in the future, mm-hmm. whatever that holds. Uh, obviously, we don't even know what that what that means right now. The uh, the future right now is I, I I joke everybody. What's today? It's either yesterday, today, or tomorrow. Yep. And uh, <laughs> and that's and that's okay for right now. Yes. But um, I, I wish both of you the best. And and the, the the most challenging I can tell you guys is is that um the you know, is that these two seniors and obviously one's my son, but the, these two seniors work hard. They love the Lord, and uh and they want to enjoy um each other and 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 uh, and people. And that's a thing that we can all look to do. And I'll tell you this too, as, as we wrap this up is one thing I'm learning through all this is to appreciate the little things. You know, um, I was telling my seventh grade today, I, I had a zooming with them. I said, you know, I, I used to fist bump everybody. I would love to fist bump somebody right now, you know, besides my own family. Um, so mm-hmm. we take a lot for granted. And so I, I, I sure hope that, um, 
that when this is all said and done, whatever that means, that, uh, that we don't take the little things for granted and that uh, you know, we, can, we can learn to appreciate things that even aren't the most glamorous, yeah. but just yeah. appreciate the, you know, the, the everyday because God gets glory even in the everyday. Uh, whether it's whether it's just a boring day at school, which we would sure. love to have right now, uh, yeah. or an exciting day, uh, find yeah. find appreciation in the small things. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, there are days at school where, yeah. like you said, For it sure. might be super boring, but I mean, I I tried to enjoy whatever was going on, so I yeah. kind of missed that. Yeah, Mitchell, how about you? Yeah, for sure. Yep. All right, yeah, anything just going else? Along, yeah, go like I missed the little like everyday things. Yeah, I, I agree I with the you. Missed everyday things. Yeah, I agree with you. Any, any, anything else, you guys, before we wrap it up? No, I don't think I have anything. <laughs> All right. Yeah, no, thank you for having us. Hey, yeah, yeah it, was it was a lot fun. of fun. And uh, maybe, may, may, maybe we'll do some more down the road before, before the year ends out. All right? All right, sweet. All right, guys, have a good one. Thanks a lot. All right.